Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will take a look at what medical conditions can be the reason for a child to be of short stature, when it is considered to be pathological and how this is assessed. So first of all, what is short stature? When a child is considered to be of short stature, it means that its height is two standard deviations or more below the mean height for children of that gender and age. In other words, it means that 95-97% to 97 of the other boys or girls of the child's age will be taller than the child. Usually it is diagnosed in the toddler age or in the time of puberty when children usually have growth spurts. I want to quickly recap how we calculate the target height for a child. So for a boy we calculate the height of the father in centimeter plus the height of the mother in centimeter plus 13 and then all that divided by 2. For girls we calculate the height of the father in centimeter plus the height of the mother in centimeter minus 13 and then all that divided by 2. The causes for a child being of short stature are of very different nature and include organic causes, familial causes, growth hormone deficit, a child being small for its gestational age, or it might even be idiopathic. The most numerous cause is chronic diseases. Those include diseases of different systems, as Crohn's and celiac disease, which affect the gastrointestinal system, inborn defects of the heart or heart failure, chronic renal failure or renal tubular acidosis, type 1 diabetes mellitus, MODI and blood diseases. If you never have heard of MODI before, you can watch our video on that in the pediatrics playlist if you like. The characteristic feature of children that are short in stature due to a chronic disease is that after the disease is treated successfully, children will grow to a normal size. This is called catch-up growth. Other causes include cystic fibrosis, metabolic diseases as a glycogen storage disease, or psychiatric diseases as for example anorexia nervosa. If you want to know more about eating disorders as for example anorexia nervosa, you can see the video on that in our pediatrics playlist as well. Also nutritional deficiencies can cause a disruption of the normal growth in the child. Also to this topic we have a separate video. Familial short stature is the most common cause. It is not considered as a disease as usually both parents are short and by the calculation of the target height we see that the children will be short as well. If we calculate for example that a girl has two parents that are both 150 centimeters tall, that then would be 150 centimeters for the father plus 150 centimeter for the mother minus 13 which equals 313 divided by 2 would mean that the girl would be around 165 centimeter as an adult so not exceptionally tall. This is also the mean height and plus or minus 8.5 centimeters would still be considered normal so if she would be at the lower edge of her normal height she would be around 148 centimeters tall as an adult. The next group of causes is the constitutional delay in development. This is the second most frequent cause for short stature, especially in boys. Here usually the growth is slowed down and the puberty occurs rather late. The development is normal, just a little bit slower, but in the end, towards the adult age, the child will still reach a normal end height. Usually this is also familial, so family anamnesis is important to take. Other causes for short stature include intrauterine causes, as for example if the mother consumed alcohol during the pregnancy, if she had any infections or placental insufficiency, for example caused by smoking during the pregnancy, or if the mother did not have a sufficient nutrition while the child was developing in the womb. The next group of causes 
are skeletal anomalies. An example for that is rickets, about which you can hear more in our video about it. Other diseases in that group include osteogenesis imperfecta, a genetic disorder in the collagen formation, which leads to frequent fractures and deformities. Also, achondroplasia is a skeletal disease, which leads to a disproportionate short stature, which means that certain areas of the body, as for example the arms and legs, are more affected than for example the trunk of the body. Also, endocrine disorders can lead to short stature. This includes disorders of the pituitary gland as a deficit in growth hormone, disorders of the adrenal glands as hypercorticalism, and disorders of the thyroid gland as hypothyroidism. Also, certain chromosomal anomalies can cause short stature, as Turner syndrome and trisomy 21. You can see more on genetic diseases in our biology playlist. All those diseases we talked about so far were causes for primary short stature, so that the child was born with a cause for it. Other causes are secondary causes that lead to a child being of shorter stature. This includes malnutrition or undernutrition, to which we have a video as well, chronic diseases of the gastrointestinal tract, the kidneys, the liver, the heart or the nervous system. Some of these diseases I have mentioned earlier in this video. In the next part, I would like to talk about a diagnosis of a patient with short stature. First, we obtain a thorough medical anamnesis with questions about the pregnancy and birth, how the growth and development was so far, diet, diseases in the family, height of the parents, their siblings and grandparents, and so on and so on. After that, we determine the height, head circumference and weight of the patient and plot the height into the growth chart that is available in the internet on, for example, the page of the WHO or CDC and see in which part of the high percentile the patient falls. We also make an x-ray of the left hand for patients above the age of 1.5 years and of the left knee for patients under the age of 1.5 years. With that, we can determine the maturation of the bones and their development. Also important is the laboratory analysis to check for, for example, the thyroid hormones and growth hormones. Part of checking for the hormones is, for example, the growth hormone stimulation tests or a 24-hour secretion profile. Also, insulin tests, glucagon tests and a physical strain test can help in finding the cause. We also calculate the target height of the child to see the estimated goal of height. Also, a genetic test can be included to check for chromosomal anomalies that might cause the short height. Short stature can also be of psychosocial nature, so a growth disorder that is due to a combination of psychosocial stress and disorders in behavior. It is generally a reversible state of abnormal growth based on an unfavorable environment. These psychosocial causes can be subdivided into three subtypes, which are hyperphagic, non-hyperphagic and the anorectic type. Hyperphagic means that a patient will present likely with a higher BMI and an anorectic type with a lower than normal BMI. Characteristic is also that patients will return to a normal spectrum of height once the child is taken out of the unfavorable environment or the psychiatric disease is treated. The therapy depends on the cause of the short stature. In some causes it can be treated easily while others are, unfortunately, not able to be treated. If, for example, growth hormone deficiency is the cause of the small height, growth hormone can be supplemented until the target height is reached. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you like our channel, please comment, like, subscribe. Thank you very much.